Let's talk about the Fujifilm camera system and motorsport photography. In this video, a little bit more specifically about the Fujifilm X-T4 and the Fujifilm XF100 to 400 millimeter lens. <laughs> Welcome to the Kalani International Racetrack. Yes, you're in my boots. Yes, I forgot my tripod at home. No, I didn't forget my monopod. But we have some really cool stuff that I'm doing today. I, it's qualifying and practice day. It's the Friday before race weekend at Kalani and I am trying out a few cool things. Firstly, I'm testing out the Fujifilm XF 100 to 400 more lens, flipping beautiful. I'm also trying out the Fujifilm X-T4 with my XS10 and I'm using the Tamron 18 to 300 mm uh, This is one of the new lenses that just launched a couple of months ago. I think it's just dropped in South Africa, which is super rad. Um, so I'm going to be trying all these things out. I've already done a bit of testing with the, uh, with the X-T4 and the 100 to 400, and I'm now going to be doing some testing with the X-T4 and the 18 to 300. So I don't know where this video is going to go. I don't know where it's going to, if I'm going to go back to the studio and talk about shots afterwards and give reviews because uh, I don't have someone to help me shoot here today. So see you in the future. Thanks, Alex, from the past, I guess. I don't know why I always forget what to say. I mean, I've got it written on my board over here, what to say. Um, okay, so the legend. Mm. <coughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Last take. The absolute legends over at Fujifilm South Africa let me use the Fujifilm X-T4 and the Fujifilm XF 100 to 400 mm lens for the weekend of racing at Kalani in Cape Town. Um, so yeah, basically I had the camera for about three days. Um, so I picked it up on Friday morning and I was like, I'm shooting straight down to the circuit and I want to try and get used to this because obviously I, I very specifically shoot with my Nikon DA10 um, when I shoot motorsports. I'm used to this is the body I've used for a long time. Um, I know how the you know the, all the different focusing modes and stuff work for motorsports, so I know how to get the best out of that camera. I didn't really know yet how to get the best out of the Fujifilm system. I obviously have the Fujifilm XS10 um, that I use for my real estate work, but real estate and motorsport are completely different. So yeah, I had the camera for a couple of days and I decided let me do the absolute best that I can do with this, setup, uh, with this system. So on Friday, it took me probably about 45 minutes to maybe two hours to kind of get used to the system, um, get used to the ergonomics of it. So there's a big difference between like a big DSLR body and an X-T4, um, which is potentially my only gripe about the Fujifilm X-T4 with the bigger lens for the weekend is that you hold the camera just with your pinky a little bit underneath. Uh, it's, it's a bit, it's a little bit smaller in the hand. Um, so with a big heavy lens shooting in the wind, you know, trying to shoot at max 400 mil, you, you kind of, you, you tend to grip up a little bit harder. So my hand got a little bit sore, but hey, listen, that's, that's much of a much. On Saturday, it was obviously a lot better. I think I got used to it. Um, but yeah, I got used to it really quick and easy. There, there are only three definitive focus modes, two that I'd recommend using um, on the X-T4. Um, so I tried out all of them. I tried out the single target focus. Obviously, all of this is with continuous autofocus. Um, but yeah, I tried single point um, with like quite a small point and then like a three by three size point. Um, I tried the zone tracking, which I mean, it's it, it sounds like it would be fantastic, but because you're dealing with like quite a lot of distance in between you and your subject, your subject's going in and out of shadows and then you get tire walls and marshals and stuff in front of your shot. The camera kind of has to figure out what it's focusing on. So I think if you're shooting with zone focus, like especially with a car that's coming close by unobstructed, fantastic. Um, and then I spent the bulk of my time shooting in the, um, just the zonal focus with the three by three grid. Um, it took me kind of a little while on Saturday to figure out which one works best and I couldn't figure out which one works best. I could tell you which one doesn't work the best and that's obviously the zone tracking. Um, between the single point and between the zonal 3x3, I think either of them work almost as well as I could have hoped for, I guess. Um, I mean, when you talk about motorsport photography, you talk about like a hit success rate or like a hit and miss rate. Uh, I shot four and a half thousand shots on the weekend and I think my focus success rate was about 2,500 shots. Um, and I'm talking like in focus, maybe not 100% crisp, but like th that was my focus rate. Those are the shots I could export and put online if I wanted to. So I think I hit maybe about 50% focus rate, which is very good. Um, more often than not, I would shoot like a burst of eight to 15 shots and 
uh, I'd maybe get three or four on focus. So this was surprisingly good. Um, I don't know if it's just because the lens is great. So I don't know if it's because the body's great. I don't know if it's because the autofocus system is great, but my success rate was pretty fantastic. I am looking at the board there. So if you're wondering why I keep looking away, it's because I just, my brain just, it dilapidates or whatever. I don't even know what the word is and it just, it, disintegrates and it crumbles down as soon as I put the bloody camera on. Um, 15 frame per second burst mode, especially in mechanical, is super dangerous. I, I have a 64 gig card that was you know in there and it didn't last very long. Like you find yourself just going wow as the cars come past and it's, it's really easy to shoot too much and then get home the next day and start regretting it when your copy takes 15 to 20 minutes. Um, Okay, let's talk a little bit about the, um, hmm. let's talk a little bit about the Fujifilm XF100 to 400mm lens. Um, wow, <laughs> I don't actually know what to say. I have no complaints about it. It's a fan flipping tastic lens. I found myself shooting quite a lot at, you know, 400mm or 560mm on the APS-C and I, I just, I was max zoom all the time trying to shoot, you know, the first corner from across the other side of the track and it, it just hits it. It hits the mark almost every single time. One thing I actually found that was a bit weird um, is I would, like I'd run into like heat haze. So because I'm shooting from so far, there's obviously, there's probably a lot of space between us, but there's a lot of space for the heat rays and heat haze to come up. So I had a couple of shots where I was like, man, is this in focus or is it not? And it's actually just the heat haze. You can actually just see wobbly heat haze in the shot. I've never experienced that before. I think I've, I've had that a few times on my 70 to 200, um, but that was weird. That was the first time I've seen that. Um, it's a very fast lens. It, it picks up on, on what I'm doing quite quickly. It's also very easy to hold. When you're shooting, you know, you, you're kind of holding right like this, but, and you know, it's, it, English is not easy for me sometimes. And when you're shooting at max focal range and you are panning, there's there's a few things that you, you need to kind of think about. And that is, your your speed that you need to pan is going to be slower than what you think it is to track the car so i got confused quite a lot i was like i'm expecting to be tracking super fast but actually it's quite a slow pan because of you know the focal range i've never shot on a 400 mm or 500 mm before um but the the lens handled it and obviously with the xt4s you know ibis and oas on the lens and everything it was mm, i mean i'm a shaky boy i'm an obb 33 but i'm shaky i i'm notoriously bad when it comes to the shake shake so when when I shoot on the on the Necron quite often, I, I have optical stabilizer, but I don't have in-body image stabilization, and I I lose a lot of shots at maximum range because I'm a little bit wobbly, you know, a little bit on the shake. But the XD4 and the 100 400 handled it fantastic. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, I wanted to talk a little bit about this. So this is the Tamron 18 to 300 mm lens. It's a new lens that came out for Sony and Fuji mounts. Um, I tried to use this on the X-T4 a little bit, but unfortunately the lens needs a firmware update to work on the X-T4. It works on my X-S10 and I think I'll throw up maybe a few shots in the video from the X-S10 with this lens because my wife had the camera for the day and she's a novice photographer, but she absolutely killed it. I actually think she got some sharper shots than I did. But yeah, I think you know, to kind of conclude this review slash first impressions, let me stipulate again, I only had the camera for two, three days. So I was learning a new system for, or a new body and everything out for motorsport, which is, you know, when you're learning on the fly, it's, it's quite interesting. But like I said, I picked it up very quickly. Um, the lens was fantastic. I think one of the sharpest, quickest lenses that I've used before. Also with the size, easy to hold. Um, no complaints except for, like I said, maybe just the ergonomics of the X-T4 body. So can you use the Fujifilm X-T4 for motorsport photography? Great success, yes you can. That was so corny, but we'll see you guys in the next video, bye.